Hey guys, Jared Rehongi here. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the importance of being a good training partner when training knife defense. Okay? Now, that may sound a little strange, but it really is important. Okay? And I, I'll give you some examples. Many of you may have seen the uh, In Living Color sketch with Jim Carrey, where he's got his arm hyperextended straight, and he's telling his students to attack him like that because um, that's the only way he knows how to defend. You're supposed to come at me like this. Well, um, while there's some truth to that, um, there are some levels of importance to understanding how to be a good bad guy okay? or a good attacker. And not just a good attacker, but just a good training partner in general. A lot of the methodologies we use are drawn from the Filipino martial arts. And in the Filipino martial arts, there are a lot of drills, flow drills, okay? Uh, and in the context of these drills, I am being, what I call it, these, these coach athlete drills. I'm being a coach. As I feed my partner, I'm trying to make him learn a skill. And then he gets a turn to be the coach and I'm the athlete while he feeds to me and I'm trying to learn the skill. So we're trying to help each other to learn something. Okay? And to do that, it means you've got to be able to be a good training partner know how to be a coach. The idea of uh, drills, not just flow drills, but even um, isolating techniques. The idea is to help your partner succeed. Okay? Um, succeed in learning what it is that the learning objectives are. Okay? And, it's, and if you're not being a good partner, you can make it difficult for your partner to learn. Okay? Um, so focus on what are the learning objectives here. For example, if um, we're learning how to defend against an overhand attack. And every time I attack, I feed down here, right? A low line attack. And then you say, oh, but uh, the reality is in combat, I don't know what the attack is going to be. Well, there's some, well, there's some truth to that. Um, you need to figure out what it is you're trying to learn through that drill. If every time you're trying to learn how to defend against an overhand attack, your partner feeds an underhand attack, well, one, um, you're not going to help your partner to learn what it is you're trying to defend against, a low line attack. Maybe it's midline, maybe it's high line, right? But you need to understand uh, that there's an isolation of um, areas because the techniques, while they should be simple and fairly transferable, they are slightly different. And what I mean by that is defending against a high line attack, I may have my hand orientated upward or my forearm from the elbow to my hand. Defending against a low line attack, I may have my arm orientated downward, okay? It's a subtle difference, but it is a difference. I can't defend against a high line attack by orientating my arm downward, okay? So I need to understand some simple um, mechanics and how to apply them to different techniques. So uh, feeding a midline attack, right? There is a difference between a, a center line attack, something that may be between one and 11 o'clock, right? An overhand attack versus a lateral attack, okay? Um, there are things you can do against one or need to do against one that you can't against another. So you need to uh, understand the isolation. Feed good, uh, correct angles to your partner. Obviously, you need to start evolving to areas where now it's more reaction based. I don't know what angle they're going to feed me. And whether that's in the form of a drill or free sparring, pressure testing, um, pressure drills, you need to get there eventually. But there are progressions that can again help to isolate certain things. So. Being a good partner, understanding learning objectives is important. Not, not feeding your partner attacks or in a drill that may be faster than they're capable of, of actually um, responding to, right? So if your partner keeps doing it wrong, maybe slow the drill down a little bit. Sometimes I'll even telegraph the attack and show it to them so that they have the ability to recognize and orientate themselves to what is going on and respond to it. And then as they get it, speed it back up, abbreviate the movements, don't exaggerate them too much so that they start to refine their eye for seeing what it is that we're trying to present to them, the, the, the uh, stimulus response, okay? So um, th these are some of the reasons why it's important that uh, we be a good training partner and hopefully our partner reciprocates so that they can enhance our learning also. They, they're pros and cons to being feeding good, clean attacks that I'm able to, to, um, to respond to. And then again, when the time's appropriate, going into free sparring or drills that allow you to pressure test these and some, using some more real energy. Okay. So some advice for you guys as you train in the Edge Weapon Countermeasures module. We hope to see you there.